Hi, I'm Fiona Morris and in this video I want to show you how to shape a shawl collar like this jacket in front of me using short row knitting and garter stitch. So the edging, the collar and front bands are picked up all the way round the um, front edge and knitted back and forth with short rows to make the collar higher at the back than it is at the front. So if I put that out of the way and bring my knitting over, I've cast on just a sample number of stitches and I've used two stitch markers to simulate the back width, the um, centre back section of my collar, which uh, identifies that this would be the equivalent of the shoulder points on the jacket if you were going to knit the jacket. So the method of short row uh, knitting that I'm using is what's known as a wrap and turn. There are quite a few different methods of connecting your stitches from one group, one row to the next. And in this particular video, I'm going to use wrap and turn. You've just got to wait while I just get to the right point. So I'm going to knit across to the second stitch marker, which would be the further shoulder. So I'm going to knit past that first stitch marker and up to the second stitch marker. And I'm now going to perform my wrap and turn. So I'm going to slip the next stitch from the left needle to the right needle purlwise, bring the yarn between the needles and then slip the stitch back onto the left needle while making sure that it doesn't catch the yarn. I now turn my knitting around so this is why you get the wrap and turn. So the yarn has wrapped around the base of this stitch and I'm turning to go back the other way. So at the moment I haven't knitted this group of stitches. I'm now going to knit back to where the other stitch marker is, which would be the other shoulder and this would be across the back neck. So I've got to the second stitch marker. I'm going to perform the same process of wrap and turn. So again, I slip the next stitch from the left needle to the right needle purlwise, move the yarn forward, slip the stitch back and turn. So the way this short row pattern works is that you gradually work longer and longer rows. Quite often with short row shaping, you may start with longer rows and get shorter, but in this particular version we're going to get longer. So I've now come to the stitch that I wrapped previously. You may well quite often find that people say because the wrap is the same as the garter stitch you don't actually need to pick it up. It really is up to you. So I'm just going to demonstrate if you decide you do want to pick up your wrap. This is the, the loop that was wrapped around and that's the stitch it's wrapped around. So I'm going to pick up the loop and go into the stitch it's wrapped around, knit the two together. And I'm going to then knit another two stitches and do my wrap and turn. Now I could at this point, to help me keep track of what I'm doing, move the locking stitch marker, if you've got locking stitch markers, and slip it onto the yarn where the next wrap and turn stitch is. So I'm going to turn, and again I'm going to knit back to the wrap and turn point at the other end of the row. So I'm gradually knitting more and more stitches. Just get some more yarn. So 
you do usually get a little gap appearing between the wrapped stitch and the next stitch along. So on this side I'm not going to bother picking up the wrap so that we can maybe just see the difference if there is any. So that's the wrap stitch and I'm going to knit two more stitches. And again I can go back and this time take the stitch marker off of that side because I actually need to see where the wrap and turn stitches on this side. So I've knitted the two, slip one, knit purlwise, bring the yarn forward, slip the stitch back and turn. Again, I'm going to knit back to the other side. So when you're following the pattern it will tell you how many stitches between each wrap and turn section. So again I've come to, this is the stitch that's got the little wrap around the base, so that's the normal pearl bump and that's the wrap. So I'm going to knit into the wrap and the stitch and then knit two more stitches. Move my marker up to the new position. So it's not necessary to use markers if you don't want to, but if it's a new technique for you, you may find it helpful. Slip the stitch purlwise, bring the arm forward, slip the stitch back, turn the knitting. So I'm just going to go back. I'll do another couple of rows just to show you on each side and then I will work the row across all of the stitches so you can see how in the centre, I imagine you can see even with me knitting now, in the centre here there are a lot more rows than at the edges. So this is my marked stitch here and this time I'm just going to knit it and then knit the next two move the stitch marker, slip the stitch purlwise, bring the yarn forward, slip the stitch back. So again if you're not always sure why you should be slipping the stitch purlwise or knitwise, which I know is an area of knitting that a lot of people find confusing, I'm just moving the, the stitch from one needle to the other. I'm not doing anything else with it. So in order to keep it mounted on the needle the correct way round, I need to slip it purlwise even though I'm working a knit stitch. I've got one more stitch to go to get to the wrapped stitch. So there's my wrap and on this side I was picking up the wrap and knitting it with the stitch and then knit Two more, move the stitch marker down, connect it, turn, sorry no I didn't actually do my slip. So if I turned then without slipping this stitch over I would actually get a hole, not a very big one but there would be a hole there where I went from one row to the next. So that's the reason why we do wrap and turn. So that's wrapping, turn the knitting, work back to the other end, and then when you've done all of your wrap and turn rows, so when I started I only knitted partially across the row. So the first right side row had more rows at the bottom end than the end of the row. But that all gets balanced out when we finish up our wrap and turn. So that's my wrap stitch I'm going to knit that stitch take off the marker, 
knit two more, two, and then put the marker back in just in case you want it. Slip the stitch, bring the yarn forward, move the stitch back. Just undo some more yarn, and this time I'm going to knit to the end of the row. So we've not got too much more to go. And because I was picking up the wraps on this side, when I get to my mark stitch, I can actually remove the markers now if I want. So I'm going to knit that stitch. I've actually got another stitch to knit before I get to the wrapped stitch. So that's that one. Remove my marker altogether. That's my wrap into the stitch and knit the two together, making sure that I come out below the wrap and knit to the end of the row. I'll just knit to the other end of the row to show you it's the same finish. So once I've got back to the other end I will have completed all the short rows and all of the stitches in the band would now be back in work. So when you're knitting a collar you would usually do at least one repetition of the short rows and then knit some rows over all the stitches but to make a more pronounced shawl collar you may want to repeat the short row section again to give you um, a, a more pronounced turnover collar if you want a nice sort of deep shawl collar. We're just coming up to the wrap stitch and on this side I was just knitting it without picking up the wrap. Remove the pin altogether and knit to the end of the row. So if I now lay this out flat or on my circular, so you can see that this section in the middle here has a lot more rows than the sections at the edge and there's not a lot of difference whether you pick up the wraps or you don't. It does make a difference if you're working in stocking stitch or a stocking stitch based stitch pattern. You do need to pick up your wraps but because garter stitch has lumps anyway you can hide the wrap behind the garter stitch ridge. So that's how to work the short rows for the uh, garter stitch collar, shawl collar, off my chunky cable jacket. Goodbye for now.